So if you don't be so kind, these are beautiful. And I, want, I, want to, I want to wrap up talking about them. Thank you so much. That's just so nice. Everybody do this with me real quick. Okay? Everybody do this with me. On your TIs, type zero. Okay? No, 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 no. You've already, you've already generated your random numbers. Okay. Yes, yeah, so zero, then press the store button, which is right above on. Okay? And then go into that math menu over to PRB and then number one. It's, you, this, this should sound familiar. You just did it with that randomization in your quiz, right? Mm -hmm. Then press enter. Uh, Who so far? Yeah, wait a minute. Oh. I, I got the Oh, okay. Now, everybody, math, left, Go down to rand int number five. Okay, remember this command, rand int. Everybody type one, comma six, and then close it all. Eight. Okay. Once you've done that, press enter. Who wrote a six? Press enter again. Who wrote a six again? Press enter again. Who rolled a one? Press enter again, who rolled a four. Yeah. How random is this being? Zero. Because the thing about randomness on a computer is that a computer cannot be random. It can be pseudo-random. And that's what I was talking about before. I could tell by what I was saying it wasn't making any sense to you guys. So what, what the computer can do is, once you put it down in a place, it can operate in a random manner. But it can't put itself into a random place to start doing that. So, you have to do what's called seeding the randomizer by putting in some kind of a random value, hence your birthday. That's why I had you guys put your birthdays in. That's pseudo-random. It's still not as perfect as a true random number table, so to speak, but it was better than this. Because if we did this, every one of these box plots would look exactly the same. And that's boring as hell, right? That's boring. I want to see, vari I want to see variability in the randomness. Every randomizer has this problem. My dad works at, at DuPont, and for years he was working on building something that was top secret. And they had a passcode on a digital credit card size thing that would refresh every 20 seconds with a new password. So if he had to log on remotely, he had to have the most current password. Even at that level of security, that password is generated by a pseudo random number that comes in from some alternate source that then feeds into a computer generator random number generator. Isn't that wild? Totally cool. So a computer, as awesome as a computer is, it's nowhere near as random as pure randomness can be. Okay. So you make up for it in other ways. Cool? That explains the CD process to you, just so you understand why you put your birthday in it. Okay, let's turn this off, and let's marvel at the gorgeousness, gorgeousness of your data. Now what I love about this, what I love about this, look at all those box plots. And they're all different, aren't they? And they're all different. But are they all so similar? Now you have to start thinking like a statistician here. They all overlap. They all, good, say that again, Kate. Oh, I love to hear stuff like that. They're overlapping each other quite a bit. Look at where the boxes are on all of those box plots. Most of those boxes are right about here. Looks like the highest value we get is like 55, and the lowest box value is down here around five, but those are definitely the extremes. The vast majority are in a much tighter area in here. So what you're seeing is even with the random cool fluctuations back and forth between what you guys are generating and, and what the next group next to you is generating, we still get some consistency across that. Why is that? Anybody know the answer to that? It's a trick question. It's a trick E question. Not a trick question. Trick E question. Does anybody know why? It's a 244 kind of question. Because you're sampling randomly you're getting a good view of the overriding data set. Now, you're getting incomplete views every single time, but you're getting close to what the actual data set looks like. Isn't that cool? Look at your, look at your extremes. Even the extremes, when they exist, are out there. Look at, the, look, at the, look at the extremes down this side. Kate, go ahead, please. Isn't this why when you're doing a survey of the entire nation and you take a small sample, it still will all work? As long as it was drawn randomly. This is why you don't need to. I often hear people say, how can you trust a Gallup poll? They only surveyed 1,300 people. How can that be enough Americans? It's plenty. 
it's plenty to get within three percentage points of what you're looking for, as long as it's done properly. And that's a big if. But yes, that's 100% correct. Okay, thank you for that. Now check. Isn't, Patrick, go ahead. Isn't there a minimum percentage? There, there, well, it depends on how, how precise you want to be. If, you, if you're willing to accept a 30% margin of error, you can, you accept, no, I wouldn't, Patty. But if you're willing to accept that, then you can go sample 20 people and call it good. But if you want to get some level of precision, you've got to get 1,000. 1,000, FYI, 1,068 gets you 95% confidence, 3% margin of error. 1,068 is the cutoff for those two, those two requirements. It's, it is totally amazing. It's all based mathematically. We'll do it in 244. Now, how many of you guys also ran the secondary box plots with outliers? Good. So you, you know if you had them or not, correct? Okay, let me see if I can predict it from your curves. This one is tough. I don't think it did. This one definitely doesn't. This one I think has one. This one has one for sure. That one has one. That one has one. This one doesn't. That one I think does, if I'm doing my scaling in my mind right, that one doesn't. This one, close, I'm going to say yes, this one doesn't. How did I do? How did I do? Pretty pretty well? I missed a couple of it. JC, which one was your guys? Just out of curiosity. Which color and where? The second red one at the bottom. This one. You guys did not, and I said it did. Okay, so I was off by that one. I knew that was going to be, be a typo for me. How am I doing that, Hattie? Oh, sorry. Oh, it was off on your guys too. Okay, How, who did I hit, yes or no? I was correct in a bunch and I was off on two. So I did okay on average. How did I know that? How did I know? What is the TI doing to decide if you have outliers or not? And this is bridging the gap to Thursday's discussion more than anything. So, Scott, go. It's measuring Q3 to not Q4, but the max. Exactly. It, what it's doing is, and this is one way of many of measuring outliers. It's checking the box width, takes the box width, increases it by 50%, then stacks that distance onto the quartiles. If there is a data point outside my fingers, that's an outlier. So that's all I could tell the orange one had one. Took the box width, increased by 50%, stack. See that guy out there? At least that one is an outlier. There might even be more. This guy here, increased by 50%, stack, outlier. Uh, let's put one. Here, here's one that doesn't. Increase by 50%, stack. Still within the realm, 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 uh, realm of reasonable, so not an outlier. I was off on yours, JC, correct? And you guys are this one? Yeah, yeah. Let's see why. So there's increase by 50%, stack. So you guys had one, and I said you didn't. Is that correct? Yeah. I don't think we have one. Huh. That's Maybe my scale wasn't big It's possible, but based on those numbers, Here's mathematically, let's do, it, let's do it mathematically. 41 to 10 is about 30. If I increase that by 50%, that's 45. 45 above 41 is 86. 90 is bigger than that. You guys have an outlier. You have to, just re, re it. Use the other, the other box plot. And you guys, Hattie and Andrew, where were you guys? Blue. Blue, okay. 50%. Stack. Oh, I said there was one. There isn't, right? So that was one of those close ones. It's hard to, it's because it's so large, it's hard to call. I'm not seeing it. I'll come back and don't don't get hung up on it. I'll come and take a look at it after we, after we break for the day. But this is the beginning of our last discussion of pure statistics, which is how do we call something an outlier? When should we call something an outlier? How big is too big? Why did your class have an outlier in Scott State visits, but the other class did not? Why why are some large and small values unusual and others are not? We'll get into that next time. But for next time. A couple things I want you to do for me. Number one, for sure, exam corrections. Yes? Rainy day exam corrections. Please, five points back. I want to get five points to people. And that's Tuesday on Thursday? The Thursday, yes, ma'am. Bring questions on relative position as well. Yes? Relative position. That's stuff we just finished today. And turn in your in class quiz. Let's make a pile right here. JC, let's figure out why we can't see that thing. Sorry. I don't know what I'm